hi guys welcome to my channel thank you so much for tuning in if you're new here welcome thank you for always 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 being part of our family you're welcome to the sam for home um, my name is Solua sam oladapo and this is my husband sam oladapo it's been a while that i think it's the first time we are gracing our youtube channel this year yeah happy new year guys <laughs> So, um, yeah, um, today we'll be talking about lessons we've learned in two years of marriage. I brought him here to discuss with us. You get me now. Okay, so we got married on the 26th of, I was about to say March, 26th of December, 2020. And, um, yeah, we celebrated two years of marriage um, last year, last December. And we were supposed to do this video, but I mean, December was really busy for us. Like I was recording back to back in the car and all that. It was really, really busy. So yeah. no better time. I mean, it's not as if the lessons will expire or anything. So let's jump right into the video. Uh, so I think one of the first things that I like to say is that um, at the end of the day, some of the lessons learned in marriage are not entirely like called out for marriage, right? They can be used for your yeah. relationships before you get married. Um, but if I'm to talk about one of the first things I learned is uh, to truly show, um, to truly be considerate, right? Uh, when I say consideration, it's looking out beyond yourself to think about your partner. And in this case, of course, your wife. And I I'll try to buttress a little bit so for instance uh you work your wife works right um there are times when maybe you are less busy compared to her and there's in marriage there tends to be the the role expectation that okay um the wife's got the kitchen cooking duties and stuff you have the provisional duties and stuff and usually when those... she yeah <laughs> <laughs> So usually when those uh, boxes are created and they're rigid, what happens is one party tends to get overwhelmed over time. So uh, at times it could be the wife because her schedule is extremely busy and she still has to tick that box because it is very rigid. Um, in being considerate in marriage, what, what happens is the, the guy would think, pretty much take up the initiative. So my wife is tired, right? Can I fix up something for both of us. If the guy doesn't have the strength, for instance, you can order something, right? But because the main objective is to eat. <laughs> yeah. So um, that's been considered using an example from a lady's perspective. From a guy's perspective, it could be that maybe he's overwhelmed with work, overwhelmed with finances and stuff. And the lady, for whatever reason, maybe she has a little bit of cash, um, free cash that she can use to support a few things. To, take it off his plate and whatnot. So the point exactly is, um, in marriage, I think being considerate is um, a very required thing. It's, it's, a, it's a good show of love, right? And yeah, Thank that's my you. number one point. Number two for me is um, listening. Um, so I remember, um, was it the first year? I think into the second, yeah, you got a new job last year now. Yeah. So this was a year and six or eight months after marriage. Mazo just got a new job and he just started at work. But funny enough, it wasn't like the best of times in our marriage. We were, we were, we were morphing. <laughs> we had to mm -hmm. grow, like things were changing. And, you know, so it wasn't like the sweetest honeymoon phase level. No, it, we, we were real and i remember lying down in the hot in the in the room and hs was like go and meet your husband and tell your ask your husband how he's doing and i'm like i don't i don't get <laughs> uh, you know me that maybe you should ask me how i'm doing like, why do you why do you used to do these things you know so i had a conversation with hs and just I just go and ask him so i remember i went into his room i remember that day he was facing the wall i was facing the door and I'm like, if we said I should ask you, how are you doing? You know, and that day he just, I, I saw him at a very vulnerable um, stage because you see, the thing I've learned as well for, for women is um, most times we don't know that 
as you're going through maybe a phase in your marriage, maybe you're waiting on God for children or vaginismus or um, whatever, maybe financial stuff. Men, because they are innately wired to provide or to protect, you know, so they move to that office immediately. So they want to protect you. They want to, like if you married a kind man, want to protect you. They want to care. They want to encourage you. They want to minimize the thing they, they are looking for. And they forget to communicate how they are feeling. So um, I think that uh, is embedded, but listening in the sense that as I asked him, how are you doing and all that, he, he opened up and said, okay, that he doesn't feel valued or some something because he just started working and it, it was a burden for for him but because we were dealing with marriage marriage stuff he couldn't bring that burden or he didn't bring that burden into marriage he kind of kept it to himself if those who did not reveal it to me to go and ask him like how are you really doing i would probably have never known and somehow i just encouraged him and told him that don't worry this is probably a time for you to you know do you remember that conversation yeah I remember. this is a time for for you to rest and all that before you start don't worry you know and now i mean the whole world is calling him even while he's on leave they're still calling him yeah yeah <laughs> you know but i mean these are things that maybe to you may not affect you as a woman because me if you don't need me help as long as you i will ask myself but they're paying your salary <laughs> did you move from salary you was like no it's not about that so the things that you have to listen beyond yourself don't listen when I say listen, don't look at it from your perspective. Like, ah, why are you feeling like it's not a big deal now? Ah, Shabi, you're paying your salary or something. I'm not talking about that. It will be anything. Listen to what your husband is saying. It can be as tiny, something as tiny as my mom is not picking my call. He, he doesn't want to tell you that, you know, because you feel like I'm a mommy's boy or something. Just listen and encourage. And if you can, work out, a, maybe if you can do something around that. I, I think that it really helps you know when you listen when your husband knows that my wife listens and doesn't judge me you know maybe he made a mistake i have to learn that where maybe i've been telling him stuff he didn't he didn't listen or he felt he's going to do better and maybe something happens sometimes they may even keep it quiet or he may just come and tell you eh, you were right or this happened that's not the time for you to um kick them when they are down just laugh about it and move on I think that that listening is very important because I really had to learn. I had to step away from me to really listen to him. And it's not as if he's always talking like that, in that sense. It's not as if he's going around telling you how he's feeling. So for my husband, you have to sit him down and be like, okay, so how are you feeling? So what do you feel about this? So how do you think, what do you think about this? And then from that, you'll be able to know, you know. So listening is one lesson I've learned. Makes sense. Um, <laughs> that conversation, I... I don't really remember because I think I was really hard on myself and you're like, take it easy. Calm down. Yeah. Um, okay, so so number three, I, I, I think it's regarding managing emotions, right? Um, there are times in marriage where uh, things can get really tense and stuff. Um, actually, in relationships, definitely where like you guys can really, really get uh, something happens. Maybe she's had a funny day, you've had a funny day and... Um, like something just happens and essentially emotions are up. Um, I think in marriage, it's very important, even beyond marriage, I don't know why, why I'm pegging it to marriage, but uh, marriage sort of uh, amplifies. amplifies it because you guys are always in your face. So it, it's very important that you leverage wisdom to manage such situations. One of the things, practical steps I know that works is um, pause, like learn to pause. So um, if there are times when you're triggered to say something that you know may not be true, but you feel, okay, could make this person feel like the person has maybe said something that hurts you and you want to sort of, you have the urge to sort of retaliate, pause, right? Because the truth is the person may not have the bandwidth to take it the same way that, or may not have the bandwidth to let it go as easy as you may let it go, right? Um, because someone, your partner has done something to you does not mean you should replicate the same energy in the same vein. So, Pausing is the first thing I would say. Second thing is, you can excuse yourself. When conversations are also uh, getting to a level that you know could tilt, um, you can learn to call for time out. Um, for me, it, it was something I had to learn over time because 
normally I like to finish up conversation. So if we're having a conversation about something, I, I just want to close it out. I know that I'm done with it because usually when we revisit it, I don't remember the details. But um, I, I learned that at the end of the day, the objective is not for me to be right. Mm. Yeah. So part of the reasons why I, I like to finish the conversation or try to tie it in is because I have a clear path of thought and I believe that in my thoughts process, I'm right. Mm. So I don't want to forget my my thoughts that I've used to arm myself. I don't want to forget it. Mm. But usually when there is a timeout, all those, uh, whatever it is, let's go. And I feel down because it looks like I've lost in quotes, mm. right? But over time, and when I say over time, it's quite recently, I came to understand the fact that, see, is you don't have an issue with the person. It is um, an issue you guys are dealing with. And in dealing with the issue, the question is, if there's something that your partner has done that you really do not like, you don't need Amory to call it out, in mm-hmm. quotes, right? Mm-hmm. When there's a timeout, you can mention the fact that, okay, it's the way you spoke to me that I really did not fancy. I get where you're coming from and everything, but maybe the way you're speaking or the way you spoke, kindly w- walk around it. Or your partner could be the one saying saying the same thing. The point is, that timeout will just help manage the emotions, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so... Yeah, I, I'll keep it at time. I'll learn to pause, learn to excuse, you yourself, excuse yourself when required, um, call for timeouts when, when when required. What you said, number four, let me just... Uh, I learned that conflicts are not bad. It's the way they are managed that could be either good or bad. Um, so I see marriage as coming together of two um, whole people or two people. So sometimes they're not whole. They can get whole in marriage or whatever. Now, um, you're coming from different backgrounds. You're coming from, if you like, let them train. You people live door to door, went to the same school, the same event. They're still different. You get When you come together, when we came together, um, we started with, uh, even not marriage, or we're talking even relationship. We started mm-hmm. with a lot of conflict. A lot of conflict because I'm a strong, I'm a, what's that word? I'm an alpha female on some level. My husband is, is not necessarily the alpha male, but, you know, betas are stronger than alphas in the sense that they are very salient. You don't know what they are. They are alphas after the initial gra There's not really, they can easily, you, that's why you see men that you think they are strong. They just, their wives, are, they really love their wives and all that. But you see those quiet ones. If they don't want to love the person, oh, he's gone. Oslo, Oslo, you get me now. But, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, anyway, so um, Alpha, so my husband and I had a lot of, you know, I don't want to be hitting your mic, um, a lot of um, um, conflicting ideas, conflicting expectations. The thing is, sometimes you think, oh, when you look, maybe you hear other couples like, oh, my husband cooks, you're like, yeah, me too, I can cook, until you get into like a relationship or a marriage and you realize that some things you had been hearing over time went to, they're like seeds that went to um, rest, waiting for the perfect time to germinate. So conflicts show that, okay, there's there's a conflicting um, idea here. Mm-hmm. Instead of fighting about it, why not talk it out and, and see? So um, conflicts are not bad. I learned that, you know, my husband is willing to learn. Once you get over the initial, okay, 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 if I you do this, when it's time to set, my husband is willing to learn. So sometimes I just even just let that initial ego, whatever, that's then. Now he's not even much of that. That goes off. We just move straight to, okay, what can we learn from this? So instead of fighting to be right, why not look at, okay, what is this thing teaching us? What are we learning from this? These are things that I can tell you that we've learned over two years. Like instead of fighting, just jump over that and like okay what is this thing teaching us does this work for our marriage because your marriage is not the same as every other person's own your marriage is you god and your spouse so you you guys must divorce your oh pastor this said or mama this said that this is how the home should be what works for your home so you look at whatever you guys are fighting about and think about like okay in this kingdom home, in this, the, God, the name of our marriage is the God story. In the God story, does this have a place? 
this thing that can be outsourced, should it be causing fights? Like, oh, you didn't sweep, you didn't clean, you didn't do this, this, this. Anything that can be outsourced should not be, I think I learned that from my sister. Anything that can be outsourced in this life should not be a major cause of fights or conflicts. That's what my sister said. But she was talking even about career. That anything that you can outsource, anything, don't let it even give you a day. Just outsource. So even if you may not be able to afford maybe paying a cleaner or a cook or a driver yet, you know that this thing should not be that important. So what is this thing teaching, teaching us? And then you glean from the lesson, apologize to one another, and move on. I, I, conflicts are not bad. They just highlight, okay, this thing needs to be improved on. This thing needs to be improved on. But I think that there's, it gets a bad rap, you know, oh, you, you people fight a lot. No, no, no. People that are called power couples, Michelle and um, Barack Obama, they went to therapy, counseling therapy, you know, because they had to work through their differences. They had to find a way. And now look at them, you know. So don't think, oh, because we're fighting, we're fighting a lot or something like that. That's the end. No, it's the way you're managing it and it's the way you're viewing it. Conflicts are not bad. It's the way that you manage it. I think for me, the final uh, point I'll put out is communication, right? And I'll come from a guy's perspective. Uh, for men, sometimes we tend not to um, communicate as effectively as possible uh, in the sense that there are some things where, like, you know what, let's just move on, right? There's no need to having this conversation. And we feel, okay, we're done with it. Yeah, however, uh, like the salient seeds you mentioned, it, it just requires the right environment for it to grow, and pam, you hear talks around it, or maybe you're now giving up vibes based on it. And of course, your partner will now be wondering, okay, where's this coming from? Like all of that, or maybe it's when there's an issue and I was saying, okay, you, you did this and everything. So I, I feel communication is very required. Uh, see, you guys are married. So, and it's something that I'm also learning in the sense that just say it, whatever, whatever. And of course, when, when I'm saying just say it, you can't, for instance, let me give an example, a good example. If your wife, God forbid, but let's assume there's this smell that is consistent, right? And um, you want to mention because it, it's you believe it's not the best, right? You want to mention. You can't just say you're always stinky. Like, you, you, can't, you can't say that, right? Oh, horrible. Yeah, like, there's a way you'd pass yeah. it up because at the end of the day, you're not looking to bring her down. You're looking to lift her. Lift her. So um, I, I would say that in passing, making comments and everything, there should be a high level of empathy, a high level of just just plug yourself into the shoes of the other person. How would this person, I mean, how will I receive it if the person said this True. to me in this way? So, um, but it's very important that we try as much as possible to communicate. Now, there are some things that, um, you, you could be like, okay, maybe they are not important, but at the end of the day, you guys are married. You can talk about the least important things, right? Um, however trivial. Really playful. Yeah. Mood. However trivial. Just just, just about it. Like, cut it out. Um, but communication is very important because at the end of the day, uh, most of the conflicts get a, a, a lot. I mean, conversations, heated conversations get a lot aggravated when um, you now begin to find conversations from different places filtering into it and again like why are you saying it now you're using it as a weapon it, like ah! what do you mean by that statement <laughs> now you're using it as a weapon i don't like that line. at the end of the day why are you going to steal my life from me <laughs> it, it it's just it's just building up and it's not it's not it's not it's, it's not, not the best, best. Ah! <laughs> no, no. god plays a major role in the in the success of your marriage god the holy spirit he plays a major role in the success of your marriage i wrote an article once about the proverbs 31 women and a woman and i was reading that i used to avoid proverbs 31 because i'm like she sleeps in the she sleeps last she wakes up first she does this like is this woman happy like this do you have any form of rest in your body like this She's a field and she buys it. She, she has business. She has businesses. Uh, made <laughs> this just a lot, you know. Then reading the Bible, it's like ah, this is a lot. 
And that day I was asking the Holy Spirit that what I, I, I can't be this woman. Like in all these things, I can't be a Proverbs 31 woman. And it's just I, I didn't call you to be a Proverbs 31 woman. I called you to be my type of woman, the woman that allows me to live through her, the 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 one that allows my spirit to wife her husband the way I would want to. You know, so that, that, that was free for me because it, freeing for me, a lot of things that I've done, maybe that my husband really, really loved, that he really, really appreciated, were things that the Holy Spirit told me. For instance, that going to talk to him and ask him how he was, because it was a difficult time. Both of us were going through our own um, phases, our own processes. So I, I could have been, I, I was self-involved. I, I, I was self-involved. I was selfish with my time. I was looking for how to deal with this thing by myself. And it was the Holy Spirit that called me out. So in, in, when life gets, when life lives, sometimes, eh, you may not remember all these love languages, apology languages, all these things. Guess who is going to remind you? It may not now remind you as love language. It may not remind you, but you just you go and do this thing. And he will give you the grace to do because the knowledge to do is different from the power to do. So the Holy Spirit is very important in because now you're not living for yourself alone, which is living for yourself. Adulting is already is already gasbos on that level, but he's you are responsible for the success of this person in, in a sense. You are responsible for creating an atmosphere where he thrives. You are responsible for his emotional uh, um, stability in his entirety. You are responsible for a lot of things. This is your responsibility. Your marriage is your first responsibility when you are married. So you need to depend on God totally. And I can never minimize that because in, in the God story that I'm married, in seeing how things have morphed, you know, I've done things in this marriage that if they had told me, I would have insisted that never, ever, ever would I be able to take this or would I be able to forgive this. Never. And yet, I look, just last year, December, I was looking at how much I really love my husband, how much I really, you know, enjoy his company and all of that. And I compared it to December 2021, you know, or earlier in 2022. And I'm like, this has to be God. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. This has to be God because I couldn't see a way it would have happened. But here we are. So I want you to understand that and take that away from here. If you have been doing marriage without God, you have been doing marriage wrongly. I don't care how much. If you have been doing it based on the societal um, um, expectations or the definitions from the world or even from religion, you have been doing it wrongly. You should do marriage as God, because that thing that my husband said, the first point about being considerate, it takes the Holy Spirit to help you to unlearn some things where maybe you grew up in a home where no matter how tired your mother was, she would enter the kitchen, she would cook, she would do that. And now your wife is working, she may just be tired. Maybe her hormones are everywhere. And some people, even with pregnancy, they are expected to enter the kitchen to cook for the husband. Who will sit? I've seen it happen. And me, I'm wondering, like, is, is this fair? You know, so it takes the Holy Spirit to be able to prick your husband's heart and say, no, 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 no. Tell her to rest. You go into the kitchen or you order food. You do this, you do that. It's very, very important to the level that people will be looking at your marriage and say, this one has become our uh, husband. You have become Ruth Abokoku or she has, um, he has become his wife's rapper. Let me tell you, good marriages, great marriages, the husbands are usually called the women's rapper. I'm telling you. Even Michelle Obama, I'm using it because they call Barack the same thing. Um, I mean, it, because the, most people are not used to seeing men really die to self. They never really see it. We see a lot of men with their ego and everything, even in marriage. And that's not what God has asked for. So God plays a huge role in your marriage. And I hope that you take that. And, and anything, like my husband said, is not just for marriage. It's not just for relations. Even in your business, anything, your career your relationships to your siblings, your parents, God plays a major role. God plays the major role. So allow him to play the major role and watch your marriage So The funny thing is, uh, I was going to say this, so people are like, why didn't you put God as the first thing? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've covered it now. No, so, some people, they're not religious. God has to be number one oh. in the... But at the end of the day, God is always number one. <laughs> Right. Um, we, we can also look at God as a foundation, and foundation is under. Right? But what but I the point sorry. is, continue. Yeah, 
Um, the, the point is, like she said, everything that we've said, the communication, the whatever, whatever, everything is embedded in um, you submitting to the leading of the Holy Spirit, yeah. right? Holy Spirit pricks your mind. Okay, have this conversation. Say this. Um, don't talk. Don't talk. <laughs> excuse yourself. Ask for time out. Everything at the end of the day. Delete that message. Right. Clear it. Exactly. <laughs> Say okay. <laughs> it's, it's by it's by of Holy Spirit. And if, yeah. if if what's the word you you do not submit to it, that's when the conflicts become. Because there are times when you, you realize that okay, like I had shut up. Right. Like I, I, knew, I, I knew I should shut up, but I went and yeah, it have scattered, but no problem. Grace is always there to help, help. Yeah. bring it back again. Yeah. So, yeah, with love. It's Samuel Adapos. God bless you guys. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to share. This was a very calm, and I think I really just enjoyed the way we just just with you guys. Yeah, new, new year, new calm. Uh, <laughs> okay, guys. Bye. Love you. Bye, guys.